second weekend of the new year 2023 and we are delighted to have your company here at Civic Space TV Women at the Frontline and today we have the company of a very innovative uh, woman working with the youth in Uganda and across the region, Madame Ruth Asimwe, <laughs> who has uh, come here for the first time but given us her time to walk through the journey of her life and also leadership and impact in the work that she does. So Ruth, you're welcome. Thank you very much. I am so delighted to have you. Me too. Happy and to be uh, it's a new year. I know positive uh, plans, vibes, That's new things, cool. new strategies, mm -hmm. hopes for a new year. I true. hope that you are done with the planning and uh, you're looking forward to an exciting year. Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, 2023 is a year of possibilities yes. for me mm. and also for the organization that I lead mm. and also for the young people mm -hmm. in Uganda. Mm. We're excited about this year and uh, yes, let's see what we do. Well, I, 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 we were interested in capturing your life because you work around youth empowerment, development of youth leaders, sure. youth entrepreneurs, and also, I think, uh, doing, uh, giving youth a voice, activism mm -hmm. to, you know, be heard across uh, these countries. It, it must be a very heavy task <laughs> that you have working across the region. And uh, the way I look at you at your age, I think you must uh, be having a, you know, Real, real uh, good, good work, but also a tall order mm -hmm. to do these things that you do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, so uh, currently mm -hmm. working with an organization called the Youth Line Forum. Okay. And it is a home for young people in uh, Uganda. Yeah. And uh, generally what we do is um, look at a young person, mm -hmm. understanding that an average Ugandan is a 16-year-old. So we work with young people from 16 years up to... 35 mm. and uh, what we do with the young people really it's about a uh, leadership development mm -hmm. because we want them to lead this country we want them to be better we want them you know to be at the forefront so the first thing that we do is develop them as, uh, as, as leaders, leaders. Mm. Yes. because it's been said the future is female but it's young, mm, it's young. <laughs> <laughs> so i guess that's what you're trying yes, to say ex exactly yeah and then uh, we take it a step a little bit further uh, beyond the leadership uh, development mm. and then we focus uh, on the university students so we know that um, the people that are leading us to them, our president and everyone that is in power, they started their careers while they were at the university. Activism. Activism mm. at the university. Mm. So we go to the universities here in Uganda, universities in Kenya, universities in um, Tanzania, and we work with university students really to build some kind of agency among us them. We tell them to read after they have read. Can they now start responding to issues around them, starting from the university? What is it that they see that they can be able to do better? Then we go to their communities, and then we go to the to the region. So we build solidarity around the region, the mm. region amongst university students in the region. Mm. So we do a lot of uh, movement building for university students across the region. And apart from the university students, we go back to the young people in the informal sector. In, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So yeah. Look out for the vendors, the border, border riders, the, the, the hawkers. The market, mm. the hawkers, like generally. And we also do the same thing what we're doing with the university students. So like how about we build a movement of young people in the informal sector who can be able to, to really stand out for one another, stand in solidarity, be better, you know, also get, get empowered. So basically, that's what uh, Youthline Forum has been doing uh, in the last eight years. And uh, I think um, from 2020, we started also looking at issues around civic space. So we did a program around uh, civic space. We look at the uh, human rights violations, um, freedoms, because we know that young people in this country are the ones that are affected. They are arrested, they are they beaten are up, they are arrested. on the road. They are the ones that yeah. are kidnapped, mm. you know, they are mm. the ones that are in jail right mm. now, mm. you know, when others are gotten out, the young people stay there. So we wanted um, young people to be aware of their rights, first of all, but also start speaking, speaking up about, about um, their rights. So, um, yeah, that's what I can say for now. That's a full but, basket. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing youth wow. Forum. But uh, yeah. you, you sound Kenyan, the way you speak. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Are you Kenyan? Are you Ugandan? Because your work <laughs> is uh, regional. So can I assume you're from any of these countries around no, here? Um, I'm not Kenyan. Yeah. I've worked in uh, Kenya. I've worked in Tanzania. Rwanda, I've worked in the whole of East African community, but I'm not Kenyan. I'm mm. Ugandan. Mm. Um, I was born in Fort Porto. Right. Yes. Yeah, so mm. the Fort Porto, we are the tourism city. <laughs> the city of life. Yes. A beautiful city in yeah. Uganda. So yeah. I was born in um, Fort Porto. Photo. Mm. And I think I remember when um when growing up actually when I was when um when I was growing up my no let me not take you past to the growing up. It is also <laughs> interesting. I, I'm interested interesting. in knowing who you yeah, know brought yeah. to this world this young lady. Yeah, so yeah. maybe I was when I was um still a baby. Mm. Um, my father was out fighting in the in the army in the bush. Okay. So when my mother gave birth to me, my father was not there. And uh, when they told me the story, is that uh, my mother thought I was I was a baby boy. I was going to be a baby boy. <laughs> so the day I was born, the the nurse told her, "Congratulations." You have a baby girl. Baby girl. Ah. And then my mom was like, oh. oh. Were there <laughs> many girls already? Yeah. No, I'm the first born. Oh. And then uh, the nurse like, oh, why, why are you not a patient? Mm. And she's like, you know what? The father is fighting out in the bush. So I wanted to reward him with, um, a, baby with boy. a baby boy. Oh, my. Yeah, and uh, my name at that time was uh, Bonavana. Mm -hmm. So Bonavana in our culture, it means they are all children. It's okay. She's a girl. Mm. We are all um, we are all children. Mm. But later when my dad came back, it's like, no, I have to thank God for, for this baby. So they mm. changed my name from Bonavana, which means all the children, to Asimwe. Wow. means uh, glory be to God. Wow. Yeah, so growing up, I was appreciated as the firstborn in the, um, in the, the family. family. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um, along... Um, along the way, my father was a lawyer. He was actually the first uh, lawyer in Fort Porto town, lawyer oh. Sanna Johnson. Wow. And my mother was a teacher. And I think along the way, my mom stopped um, teaching to take care of us. And, um, and my father continued um, doing his work. But I think um, at a certain point, 1996, the reform agenda came in. My father was one of the founding members Is of the uh, so? reform agenda. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so... Growing up, uh, we were always aware of injustices around mm. us. I remember we'd watch TV as a family, and my father would point out the injustices. This is, yeah, this is not this fair. Is not this fair. is not this good. Is not this fair. is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that really shaped me. Okay. So I grew up taking note of this is good. Mm. This is not good. Mm. This is not fair. Mm. This is not just. Oh. This is you know. Wow. So that is that was really me. And um, when I was going to the university. I remember the only one in the village who had made it to the university. Most of the people had gone to primary school with had either dropped out of school. Some of them had gone to Kampala to become house girls, mm, the girls. So, mm, so, mm. so really, when I was joining the university, I was privileged to be the only one. And at that time, I gathered a uh, hundred young people. That's where my career really started from. I got a hundred other young people in the community, in the district, and they started uh, Youth of uh, Destiny. Wow. So while I was studying, I was working with these 150 young people coming back during holidays. Holidays and yes, doing some work yeah, in the doing community. some work with them, work around HIV and AIDS, mm. work around, um, you know, it was mainly reproductive health and HIV and AIDS. But also at that time, I didn't even know that it was about boys and governance and accountability. But yeah, so that's what I did at the university and that's where my career Started. started. From, so actually, and, yours yeah. started right from the university and and through throughout your university, but also your upbringing, mm. your foundation. Yeah. That's why we always like to capture our early lives because mm -hmm. the moments we have in that home, in that setting, in our communities where we mm. grew up, those are the moments that you know shape who we become later that in life. True. So I could see your father played a critical role <laughs> yes, in did. raising you as an activist. Yes, he did. Yeah. So when did the the Youth Link Forum begin? Yes, so Youth Link Forum started 2014. Oh, yes. Uh, we not formally registered, but mm. 2014. Still, we started with um, university students. Mm. It was a build up of the work that has been at the university. Mm. But um, so 2014, that's when we started gathering young people young once people. more. Mm. And we're also heading to 
to the 2016 uh, elections, elections in yeah. Uganda. Mm. Yeah. So mm. there we started more mobilizing slowly, mm. really, because mm. there's nothing much you could do. But uh, in 2017, that's when we formally we formally registered wow. as a youth-led and wow. youth focused uh, wow. organization. So in terms of your work mm. in Uganda, where have you been at universities, which districts, uh, mm. in terms of the spread out, where can mm. young people find you? those kind of things just a little bit more information on that okay so we are mm. a national organization yeah you can find us in the Renzori region you can find us in western i like we we work you spread across, across. Yes, yeah we are, we are mm. spread uh, we are spread across mm. so we're currently working with 25 universities that wow. is for the university activism that's almost work. the whole uganda yes mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. we are currently working 25 universities. Mm. Um, the, with the other um, informal organizing work, we are working in four, four regions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And um, I think. I hope you are in my university that back is, in my village. That is, that is, is Kumi University. Kumi university. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it's um, just uh, a new university, well, mm, deep in the villages there, the so village. you need to reach out to we, those young we, people as well. We will, mm -hmm. we will. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, that, that's quite interesting work that you're doing. And of mm. course, uh, if you talk a little more about the statistics, uh, mm -hmm. what do they tell us? Because your focus is around young people in Uganda. I mean, mm. uh, I, I just want to capture the nature of your work and also mm -hmm. the impact of your work and why you chose mm -hmm. to work around young people. Why not us, the mamas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we also need many of these programs. But mm -hmm. you chose young people in this country and the region. Uh, yeah. why, why, why that particular area? That so half mm. the world um, is, um, is uh, half the world, I think about 30 billion, that is uh, a, young, a young people. Mm. When we come to Uganda, Uganda has a, the, the second largest population of young people in the world. In it the is, world? Yeah, it is second, uh, second to India. Wow. But um, I think beyond the statistics, it's about the nature of, of the young person. Mm. So young people, they are flexible, mm -hmm. they can quickly adopt, but also when you train them when they are younger, they, get, they become better, um, better adults. So for, for us really, when we are looking at a young person, like what can they be able to do with their energies, with their capacities, with their influence at this time? At this time. Yes, at this time. Mm. So that uh, by the time they are much older, they can be able to even um, perform better. better. Mm. Yeah, and that's why we start from a young person of 16. 16 years old so you find us in the in the schools so doing uh, work around life skills but also reproductive health work and then now uh, from a 16 year old we go on up to up to 35 and our impact has been um, one we have really grown leaders in this um, in this country okay. so we have uh, a youth leadership development uh, program mm. we call it a young leaders academy mm. so with our young leaders academy we have trained over 250 young leaders who have gone uh, through our through program your academy. and yeah. uh, these are uh, managers in um, in the organizations um, some of them are politicians. In the last, uh, just the last concluded election, we had uh, 45 young people. Wow, that sounds great. <laughs> Contesting. Yes, no, winning. Winning elections. Winning, winning elections. Of course, that is at a different, uh, at different levels from local council yes. levels. Yes, up we to were, the top. Yeah, mm. up to the up to the top. But at that's the top, critical. We only have three who, who became members of parliament, but most of them were um, in these other um, elections. Mm. So, so yes, yeah, so we have been able, and we can comfort said that we have grown and groomed young leaders in this uh, in this country but uh, and, Ruth, uh, I think that area before mm -hmm. you take leave of that matter the need for training mm -hmm. leaders young leaders mm -hmm. preparing them for the future is very very critical and uh, mm -hmm. in a country like Uganda where we feel like a lot has gone wrong in terms mm -hmm. of leadership uh, mm -hmm. in terms of leadership solutions I, I guess mm -hmm. that your work is very very important because mm -hmm. uh, the solutions that we have in society are far-fetched from what we, the leaders, mm. are providing for the community. So that mm. work of yours is, is very, very critical, and we hope that we, you can do much more uh, yeah. towards the run-up to the next to election. The next because election. a prepared leader is mm. much better than one who just jumps into, you know, is, the leadership is, um, uh, you know, that is true. place. Yeah. Yeah, mm. That is true. Yeah. And uh, also, because if I give you an example of um, the guild presidents in the universities, so we have a special program where we know the university is going for elections, 
we will see the people that are contesting mm. and then we'll take them through uh, a training. A training. Yeah. And uh, the people that we've taken through a training, some of them have become good presidents, but even those who have not, you will see that um, they, are, they are better, they they are better, better speakers, citizens. they can articulate issues, mm. they can speak on behalf of others, mm. they can amplify um, voice. If there is an issue, they'll be at the forefront. So, and they so know the really problem and they know the exactly. solutions they to the challenges the... society has. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's commendable. You're still talking mm. about the impact beyond yes. leadership development. Yes, so mm. the impact um, when was on leadership development and leadership development also at the workspace. So I will give you an example. The other day was in, uh, I was in Kenya and I saw some of the students that we had trained. They are now managers in the organization. They had come to represent the organizations and I was really proud of that. So them even leading at the workspace them even leading in the different uh, spheres of influence that um, that they are in. And then uh, another impact uh, has been uh, uh, our contribution to the sector, the youth sector. Uh -huh. yes, so I'm very passionate about building a stronger youth sector youth in, movement. Uh, in Uganda. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, also the organization has made a very big contribution to the sector development. So you can see that the time we are operating uh, there is a certain time when government closed us down. So <laughs> Everyone we are back to 54 organizations. COVID closed all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we are back to 54 organizations that were closed down by government, and um, for a year and a, uh, and a half we did not we did not work. We just gotten back our um, our permit. Mm. So the time we did not work, you could see in within the youth sector that there was a gap. Ah. Yeah. So we were making a very big contribution uh, towards the uh, sector development. Mm. So mm. you could see that uh, young people, but even the people of civil society, the youth civil society leaders like we were really growing and working together as a team and the voice of young people was being heard and felt and you could see young people making a contribution but uh, when we were not there you could see that there is a gap and now that we are we are we are back we have gotten our permit for the next five years so now that we are back um we want to see how else can the sector grow how else do we work together as young leaders of these um, institutions and how else do we you know to lift each other, each other uh, partnerships yes, yeah partnerships networks, mm, yeah how stronger do we pull, voices um, mm. so that the sector can be stronger and when the sector is stronger that means the the young people are stronger that means development is uh, it's going so on well. Going, mm. and also it contributes to, to a stronger civil society. And you talked about the unemployment issues, okay, how mm. you are contributing to the informal sector. Of course, the mm. unemployment challenge in Uganda mm. is a big, a big, a big, a tall order uh, for our mm. country and it seems like more people are getting out to the work, to the labor market and, you know, there are not sufficient jobs being created mm. and it's, it's cutting across the region perhaps mm. and uh, I, I want to hear a little bit what youth link uh, forum is is doing in that direction okay. yeah mm. so when it comes to an um, issues of unemployment mm. we we know how it is it is affecting the young <laughs> people really <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah you'll find eight out of ten young people are, are not employed that is even, that is very you, big it mm. is it is big mm. and even covid really made it worse mm. and also, so those were employed there under underpaid underpaid yeah. and mm. then the ones in the informal sector beyond the under payment they are over overworked you exploited know, expl yeah mm. so there, there are a lot of injustices around employment that mm. we work on mm. as youth line forums so we are really about voice and, and governance and yeah. accountability yeah. Yeah. so we work around that voice and then we all we are also aware that government has put in programs for for young for young people, young the people. youth livelihood fund, mm. the MIOB, mm. and all the mm. women economic empowerment fund, which also the young women should be able to benefit from. But we find that uh, the young people are not having access to to these funds. Our work is around how can young people access these funds mm. when they come in the um, in the district. And then uh, we have partnered with young, with organisations in the in the districts where we where we where where we work and the partnership is around the access to markets mm. for for the young people in the informal sector how do they make sure that they are they are having um access to you know to to market and i think beyond that the employment part is really about about voice mm. and pointing out issues that the young people are, are facing the employment mm. and how can those issues be res resolved. Be resolved maybe that could be the yes, other issue you need to issue. Uh, address being the expert mm. in youth work and the youth movement 
the areas, uh, how we link this with policy, government That's policies exactly. across the region. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what are some of those areas that we need to advocate mm -hmm. for and champion in this coming year, 2023, that you feel our governments really need to intervene uh, mm -hmm. in that area to make youth agency uh, mm -hmm. much, much better in these countries? Yes, so yeah. Uh, where government needs to intervene, I think the issue of unemployment is very, it's very, is very, is mm. very, very critical. Mm. Because if you're a young person, you do not have food on the table, you do not own land. Like generally, at least the issue of uh, employment is very critical mm. for for mm. young for young people. Mm. But I also know the government cannot cannot create cannot create Great jobs. jobs. <laughs> but the government <laughs> is about policy. Them. But so it's mm. about policy. How mm. do we make? How do we create an enabling environment mm. for young people so that they can be able to to go into gainful employment? And mm. uh, the issue of the curriculum has been around. I don't know what's happening mm. in the other East African countries, mm. but uh, with the case of Uganda, we have noted that it's our curriculum which is a problem because mm. it is preparing people for the work. It's not preparing mm. people to create, to create the work exactly. and be innovative. So uh, exactly. I guess uh, that's what you're trying to, to address. But uh, mm. how is it happening in the other regions? What's happening? Are there other areas that you feel as an expert need to, to, to stand out uh, in the coming years in terms of youth policy and youth work? Yeah, beyond mm. the unemployment uh, issues that we see. Um, so beyond um, the, the unemployment uh, issues, of course there are, there are issues um, around um, <coughs> human human rights violations. Human rights. <laughs> when you talk yes. about that, my mind jumped to Saudi Arabia, <laughs> United Arab Emirates. I don't know yeah. why, but uh, yeah. yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we see that our young people, especially like the young girls, who are who are going out to to those um to those uh, countries, um, but the injustices that they are they are they are facing, mm, you, mm, you mm. can't you can't even try to explain, explain it. Them. And uh, it's look it looks like government is not aware, and yet they are actually aware and are quiet around uh, the whole thing. So how can government be able to regulate? the companies that are taking our our young girls out mm. out out mm. out there but also when they are when they are there is there or when they ask for help can government have that agency you yeah. know agency to you intervene, know, to intervene mm. and ensure that um, whatever what whatever is happening there can be regulated and intervene so that they the people can be able to to come back so that is the the injustice that is um that is there but also there are issues um there are issues around it, it not if I can. locally <laughs> <laughs> just a few <laughs> yeah yeah yes so there are there are other issues um you talked mm -hmm. about the arrests, the, the arrest. you know, that's, yeah. that's what, that's the human I, rights violations that's what that want, we see. That's what I want to, yeah. that's what I want to say. Mm. So after the build-up of 2021 elections, a lot of young people were abducted. And unfortunately, most of them are, are, still, are still in prison. Incarcerated. Yes, are yeah. incarcerated. Mm. And can, can they be able to... To, to release them and and they come and they come back mm, so mm, that is mm, uh, one of the mm, things that mm, we are mm, we are also mm, seeing mm. well mm. i uh, i guess there's a lot that you could say uh, mm. uh and it cannot be exhausted on this mm. uh, particular one hour but mm. uh, when you look at countries like tanzania mm -hmm. you who is working in across the region mm -hmm. i don't know if they have their young people also being taken out of the country working in UAE, mm -hmm. uh, it seems like Tanzania has mm -hmm. a little bit a different approach to the mm -hmm. things that challenge the country. And uh, also in terms of uh, human rights uh, violations, how do mm -hmm. you see, I'm just trying to pick your mind around the regional dynamics, mm -hmm. regional issues, and the positioning mm -hmm. of youth in the region mm -hmm. generally, since we are talking about the East African you know, integration issues, how do you see from where you stand What's your comment? Yeah, in mm. that direction. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say Tanzania, Kenya. I think uh, the, the, there is a lot more regulation than mm. um, than here mm. in uh, in Uganda. Mm. Uh, the, the the new president of uh, of Tanz of Tanzania 
is uh, is actually doing well and better by the by as the a young woman people. <laughs> <laughs> yes as a as a woman she's doing she's doing better by the by the young people mm. and of of course um there is there is still some kind of uh, suffocation around their civic civic rights it has but, been opened uh, up I think. but it is now oh, opening recently yeah, mm. recent is now mm. opening up so so there there is some kind of uh, improvement mm. we are yet to see for Kenya but what I can say that Kenya has a lot of regulation around um, around uh, labor and you know and and uh, yeah and then externalization. externalization of yeah. labor so so Kenya is doing quite well and that is what maybe our Ugandan government need to be able to learn to learn now to learn from our two in neighboring terms of follow up ensuring mm. that our young people who go out there get good working conditions and recently mm -hmm. I had the government suspending their contract maybe mm -hmm. it was for those kind of things to renegotiate the terms and conditions mm -hmm. and all that so there's a whole lot that you're talking about uh, in terms of mm -hmm. policy issues that need to be uh, dealt with yeah so um, uh, in terms of um, the youth well of course we cannot exhaust this conversation here there are other countries, but you're not working in them. <laughs> <laughs> you're in Tanzania and Kenya and Uganda. So I'm not going mm. to go to Rwanda, <laughs> DRC and South Sudan. That's that will true. be a discussion for another day, which you sure. can come for uh, in the youth spaces. Sure. I would like us just to have a conversation around, um, you know, thriving as a young person, making it mm. big uh, as a young person, growing to become the mm. big uh, you know, big, I don't want to say big dog, <laughs> because that is mm. a bit masculine and, you know, chauvinistic mm. here and there. But how does a young person grow to thrive in the industry mm. that they are in? I know it is a big question for you here right now to exhaust it, <laughs> but just to share your experience. That's why we are mm. here. A few things that have kept mm. you going, that mm -hmm. have built you over the years, that you've journeyed mm -hmm. with in terms mm -hmm. of your ethics, values. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to become uh, who you are, ED, <laughs> <laughs> and the great woman of influence in the youth work across the region. Yes, yeah. so I think um, for me, I, my philosophy has always been development is people and not things. Okay. And this is uh, what uh, every young person needs to understand for you to be able to pop. It is about people. Mm -hmm. It is about you. Mm. So first, from, it's always about me first. I cannot give what I do not have. So I make sure I take right. care of myself. Right. I do right. better by myself. Mm. I listen. Mm. I learn. Mm. I study. I read. Yes. You know, Bro. I have some self me time, okay. like generally. Mm. So I will first look at myself. How do I better myself? How do I get someone to help me along the way like a mentor a coach so first me bettering myself listening learning and all that so that's very important so that is um, mm, the, mm. the basic and then after that how do i then be able to develop others and um, developing others is is also not just about maybe building their capacity no it's about speaking for them helping them, looking out for them, encouraging them, encouraging them to, to do, to do better, them, inspiring motivating. them, motivating. Mm. So um, that is what has uh, built me over time, understanding that development is people and not things. I think uh, the other thing that has built me up um, over time beyond, uh, beyond people is really my family. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you love knowing, family. Knowing, knowing who is uh, important to you and treasuring that uh, relationship. So okay. I'm, uh, I'm married with my with two children, but then I know at the end of the day, whatever I go and do, do my work, do that, do that. But at the end of the day, family will be very, 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 very important. important when mm. work is not there, mm. when everything else is not there, family will um will So always, what happens to uh, the youth who are 35 and they are not there. married, they are so not having families? So for the youth who are 35, they are not married, <laughs> They need to they need to work hard. That is what I would encourage them, mm. encourage them to do. Study, learn, read, work hard, create opportunities for yourself because no one is going to create opportunities for you. The government, the government will definitely not. So you have to create opportunities for yourself as a young person. Go in different spaces. You know, when you are at the when you are at the university, don't just go and sit, look mm. out what is there. Mm. If there is a meeting, go and um, go and attend it. And I think we are privileged right now with all these online meetings. There are opportunities for young people to learn. Okay. Every time instead of just being seated 
some white there's an online meeting you can log on and listen what rotating is on all whatsapp on groups <laughs> instead <laughs> yes, instead of rotating so just having that anger yeah, to to learn, to, to learn okay. you know like mm. i need to learn every every mm. day every mm. day i mm. need to learn and and learn things Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's a whole lot of uh, many things. Yeah. And uh, I know that uh, in your spaces, you probably have a curriculum, you have uh, mm. many of these uh, books and uh, things that you use to, 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 uh, to reach out to young people, yes. to, re to reach out to young people. And I guess mm -hmm. that, um, you know, I've learned of late that sharing your story, mm. personal experience, personal journey is much more inspiring to people than uh, us motivating, picking another motivational mm. quote from somewhere and replicating <laughs> it. <laughs> and that's yes. what we are doing here. Mm. Really bringing out the, the raw us, the, the who mm. we are, how we are living mm. life, how we do life, you mm. know, because then if we get this uh, already, you know, uh, uh, mm. replicated uh, motivational quote, sometimes they don't work. They don't work. But when it's somebody true. listens to your journey of life, your journey mm. or story of life, you, you know, your experience, they are much, much uh, very impactful. So I want to thank you for sharing your story. But also we use this opportunity to inspire other young people. And that's why I keep asking about uh, your, your experiences, your lessons, your, you know, yeah. So we are growing other young people, growing leaders on this space and inspiring them. So I would like just a little bit for you to, to point out how the future looks for you and the organization mm. uh, mm -hmm. right now. And uh, how does it look? How does it look? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. So um, the, the future for, for me is, is, uh, is really about voice. Voice. <laughs> yes, so the future for me is about, uh, is about voice. You know, 2023, by the time we get to 2026, there is so much more that uh, we need to do to in do. terms of uh, the, mm. the kind of work mm. that I do. So um, we, as, as a generation, we need to, to, prepare, our, to prepare ourselves and uh, really be, be, that, be that voice, be that face that we we'll fight against um, injustices. Ah. Yeah, so that is where we are, we are, we are, we are going. So what you, when you talk about the, voice, the, you're talking about being the, that person the, who amplifies injustices, injustices and challenges. And challenges, <clears throat> especially cha challenges, the injustices, but mm. also speak out mm -hmm. on behalf of those who, who cannot. Who cannot. Who cannot. Mm. So can I stand in and speak out on behalf of those who, who can who cannot of course but because uh, people have the habit of seeing something going wrong and they're like and ah, they're mm -hmm. hey, let me take my <laughs> let me in yeah, uganda me, they call it let me be in my camel is it what somewhere yeah yeah so that's mm. very important so, so really yeah mm. being at uh, being at uh, the forefront mm. we call it uh, being at the forefront of change i and, mean someone could ask why why would i mm. really go and talk about things that don't concern me i mean if somebody is out there in, mm -hmm. it's been arrested well they will mm -hmm. get out of it let me continue with my business yeah, until yeah. until it happens to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most people that's what has been happening you know everyone's like no 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 until something comes up that is happening and affecting you that's when you realize you know what it's important this is, this is um this is um important okay. this is important mm. and also really grooming more more leaders mm. i think uh, for for us as an organization yeah. now mm. yeah how do we position young people mm. how do we mm. bring about uh, more youth led uh, leadership mm. how do we bring about uh, youth leadership youth led youth led change how do we position um, the sector um, to to be better how do we position our young people how do our young people take up spaces mm. how do they you know create spaces for themselves so how do we create more partnerships so 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 really it's it's all around it's so all could around i challenge that. you for the next uh, round of elections in uganda to mm. to position your trained young people in <laughs> all the constituencies in the country from you know uh mm -hmm. from the 
the LC1. From the LC1. To the top. I mean, what, what are what young you people waiting that? for? Yeah, you these are spaces for them. Yes, they so, are. Yeah. Uh, we did, we did that. We had that challenge in the in the concluded election. Mm. And I think with some more young people taking up spaces, okay. it will be yet another, another challenge. challenge. Wow. And of course, that starts now. Yes. Yeah, grooming up uh, the young people now so mm. that by that time, they are they already... Prepared, prepared. prepared. Yes, already yeah. prepared. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that mm, that's how the future looks like. And uh, mm. of course, uh, uh, in terms of uh, our conversation, we look forward to seeing that happening. And I'm personally sure. interested in that particular <laughs> last one as well. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yeah. Because we need mm. prepared young mm. men and mm -hmm. women mm -hmm. to take up these places. And mm. if you could kindly tell the young women in your networks. Mm -hmm. To go for directly elected seats. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will. Yeah. And it's good that you really talk about the young women. Because uh -huh. I'm a feminist. Uh, yes. I look out for young women. Mm -hmm. Even in the, in the youth space. Yeah. I know the youth space is very heavy. Mm. Most times I find uh, I'm the only woman or there are two women out of, out of ten. Especially when it comes to the top leadership. So the space is very heavy. Mm. So it's always good to have women in the in the space I look out for young women mm. but also when I was growing up in in my in my career really at mm. the university someone was holding my hand I immediately finished the university the very first job I got I had someone holding my hand and supporting me through that job when I moved on to other spaces there's always uh, someone holding my hand even even now up to now, up to now. Mm. and this person has always been a woman so I I have a woman always, always that's a constant in your life <laughs> as a constant who's holding my hand helping me get better giving me op opportunities and and yeah the only thing i have to do is also give back to other young women other young and women. then we see yeah. how do we lead together wow and support one another that's very yes. important mm -hmm. and uh, i look forward to working with you in that front sure. in ensuring that <clears throat> young women take up leadership spaces in all sectors Sure. But uh, particularly as we go towards the next election to ensure that we have a young mm. woman positioning herself in directly mm. elected it's, seats. It's and we see how it goes. Because, I yeah, mean, we will not exactly. wait until... Uh, it will take us a hundred years to get that parity mm. if we don't deliberately Delib do these exactly. things. Yeah, and We, have we to need to go deliberate and not that's just true. wait for affirmative action no, if we are to get true. where we are going. We've got mm. to say bye and uh, I would just like you to speak to a young person out there in terms of one thing or two or three that mm. can inspire them to mm. move on, uh, you know, to keep journeying their life. Uh, mm. Yeah, and, and we call it uh, a day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, what yeah. do I tell the a young so person to, who is watching? To the young person yeah. who is uh, who is watching um, who is watching right now. Um, what I can say is that um, you you just you just um, need to challenge yourself. Yeah, you need to challenge yourself and see what wherever you are, know that you can you can do better. So challenge yourself to be better every day, better the way you relate with people, better what with the, with the information around you, with what you use with your time. Like generally, just challenge yourself to be better and better. And then uh, secondly, if uh, looking around your community, what is it that you can be able to do to change. for your for your community? Wow. How can it that you can be able to do to enable that? To enable your community to thrive, so make sure that uh, you're also part of the development of um, of your community. And uh, lastly, leadership you can lead whether it is in your family, mm -hmm. whether it is at your workspace, mm. whether um, leadership just just lead, provide Be, leadership, provide leadership. Mm. Be the person that every time there is a leadership gap, you step in mm -hmm. and um, and provide. Um, Leadership. leadership. Wow. Yes. Wow. You know, you are one hour or less has been very impactful. And mm -hmm. I know that uh, many things that you have said in this uh, short, short one hour, quite packed and uh, very, very important. I know that we will be able to expound many more mm -hmm. things uh, when we interact outside and deliberately look out for these young women and men wherever they are. But mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you so much uh, for coming uh, mm -hmm. on here. And I hope that we can expand this work sure. more and across sure. the region to ensure that mm. uh, 
Because yes, we are also a product of those kind of spaces. Mm -hmm. If somebody That's didn't true. hold our hands and took us through mentorship and prepared us for leadership, mm -hmm. we wouldn't be here. Personally, I, I, I credit many individuals mm -hmm. and institutions that have That's shaped true. me this far. So we'd like to do more of that leadership development, mm -hmm. uh, raising the voice of young people, reaching mm -hmm. out to the informal sector, entrepreneurs, and growing the young people. And I think your work is, is very, very critical, very critical. And we need to mm -hmm. find a way of supporting it. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, our viewer who's been here with us up to now. We we'll look forward to seeing you on another program. We've been here with Ruth Asimwe from uh, the Youth uh, Line mm -hmm. Forum, Forum. Yes. <laughs> which youth works across Forum. the region, trying to give youth a voice uh, developing their leadership skills, giving them an agency, and of course, working to grow them uh, as the next entrepreneurs in their various sectors. So it's been a wonderful moment. Until we see you again, Shalom. Mm -hmm.